Hello. All right, we'll begin with uh, just a, a recap from this past weekend. Um, obviously, uh, um, you know, a difficult loss. Um, you know, our, obviously, some some great individual uh, performances. Um, you know, Jaden Daniels, Brian Thomas, Malik, Logan, uh, offensively, um, you know, just a, a great performance. Uh, we wish we could have matched it defensively. We did not. Um, and, um, you know, certainly very disappointed that we weren't able to come out with a win on the road. Um, but, you know, again, uh, we'll have to look at um, how we get better. Um, our guys will... Um, bounce back. I'm confident in that. And uh, we'll have to go back on the road uh, against a really good uh, Missouri football team. It's an 11 a.m. kickoff um, team that's nationally ranked. So we'll, we'll get challenged again on the road against the nationally ranked team. Um, you know, they've, uh, they're well coached. I mean, uh, Eli does a great job uh, coaching both on the offensive side of the ball and defensively. They're as well coached as that, that I've seen fundamentally sound um, do, do a great job um, in, in terms of all the fundamentals. And, and then, you know, they've got some, you know, big time playmakers. Um, you know, the quarterback's playing extremely well, um, highly efficient. Um, you know, uh, you know, Luther Burden is, um, you know, you, you, you put him up there with, with Malik Neighbors. He's that kind of player. He's explosive. Um, you know, he leads the SEC in receptions, obviously. So he is a he's a game breaker. Um, they're tough and physical on the offensive line. Do a great job running the outside zone play, play action, high percentage passing game. Um, you know, number one in the SEC in pass efficiency. So uh, playing at home, uh, really good offense, right? Excellent system. Uh, as I said, well coached defensively. Um, Number one in the SEC and ninth nationally in rushing yards allowed per game. Um, so just a really good, solid football team, fundamentally sound in all areas, uh, deserving of their nationally ranking, um, and will be a great challenge for our football team. Um, but I'm confident our guys will, uh, will play their best when their best is needed, and uh, we'll go on the road uh, again. Uh, and. Um, you know, obviously, from our perspective, uh, look to play, uh, you know, a complete football game in, in all three phases. So with that, we'll open up to questions. Hey, Coach, would you say that Matt House and the defense are a big reason why you won 10 games last year? Absolutely. If you look at the games that, that, uh, that we won last year, um, you know, start with Auburn. The Auburn game and the way we played defensively, taking the football away. Um, if you look at the Arkansas game last year um, and the kind of defensive performances, um, clearly, um, you know, defense won games for us. We had a lot of veteran players. You know, you're talking about, you know, Joe Fouché, Greg Brooks. You know, we we lost, uh, you know, uh, you know, Makai Gardner. Um, Jerry Bernard Converse, that's a veteran group in the back end of the defense that um, you know, made a lot of plays for us. Um, so look, you know, we're not, we know where we're at. You know, we're playing a combination of 15 freshmen and transfers and, and they're young and inexperienced and they gotta grow and there's gonna be some growing pains. And I said that at the start of the season, when you take that many guys, there's a red flag. And, you know, we're going to have to go through these growing pains, uh, but we're going to keep fighting and we're going to keep teaching. We're going to keep coaching. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the blame does not lie at the feet of, of, of one person. Um, this is a collective situation where we've got to coach better and we've got to play better. Yeah, that was just my follow up. When the defense struggles, the fans go after the coordinator. Oh, sure. And so how are you two working together and, and, and how much confidence do you have in him that he's going to you know, try to get this fixed? Well, well we have a process that, that we, Look, when we win, um, you know, we rely on our process for consistency, right? Uh, and when we lose, uh, we do the same thing, but sometimes you have to tweak your process, right? There, there are things that you tweak. And so in our total preparation, it's always about the physical, the technical, the tactical, and the mental. So will there be some tweaks, possibly technically? Sure. Tactically, absolutely. 
Um, where there'll be some tweaks uh, physically? Certainly, maybe we have to do some things, but we have a process so we don't get caught up in um, the emotions of, of what might or might not happen. So we always rely on our process so we can stay consistent on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and we'll rely on our process, whether things are going well or sometimes when there's some adversity like there is right now. Yeah, Brian, right here. Uh, uh, can you confirm if you've hired Pete Jenkins as an analyst? And if you have, what do you kind of expect that he can bring to y'all that maybe right now you don't have? Yeah, so as you know, Jimmy Lindsay has not been with us as our defensive line coach. And, you know, one of the things that we want to be able to do is in, in hiring Pete, um, and his role has not been defined yet other than he will be consulting uh, and, and assisting our defensive line room. And, um, you know, John Jancic has the defensive line. His his. Ex expertise is not necessarily in that area. Um, he's a good football coach, but we want to provide our student athletes with the most resources. And, and Pete gives us the expertise and um, the ability to, to help us with technique uh, and, and some technical things that we want to be able to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So he's going to come in, uh, he'll be here uh, and, and assist us and, and help uh, Coach Jancic in that room. What are the advantages, or are there in this situation any disadvantages to having a corner coach and a safety coach? Why is why is the staff kind of moved towards that 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 model? Well, there's so many complexities. I mean, I could this would take a while. Um, you know, your safeties are linked into run fits um, that that are not the same run fits that the corners are. So. You know, your safeties need to be uh, part of some drill work that the corners are not even involved in. Um, whereas, you know, the corners need to be in some technical work during that time that would be um, purely a waste of time for them. So you, you really need to separate those two. Uh, they, they really can't be working together all the time. So, um, it, it, and it's something that for me, I, I think, Probably the last, oh God, it's got to be 20 years since since I've had that group uh, together. It's it's always been safeties and corners for me. Uh, just d defensively, how do you balance personnel with scheme? I mean, you guys have played a lot of the same players, you know, over the last couple of weeks. But just what does it look like? I guess kind of going forward in terms of how you get those guys in the best position to, to impact the game and, and the scheme. Yeah, so, you know, we got home at around 2 a.m. I got about four or five hours sleep. And um, since that time, we've been, um, we've been having those discussions up until I walked into this door right here. So that point is exactly what we're, we're spending time on. I think we've come up with some um, valid uh, kind of solutions uh, to where we want to go moving forward. Look. We missed a lot of tackles uh, that gave up a lot of yards after uh, the, the misses. We've got to be better in the fundamentals, uh, and our guys know that. Uh, we've got to get the ball on the ground. Uh, we've got to create a new line of scrimmage, uh, and, and that will be job one and job two uh, as, as we move forward on Tuesday. So Brian in the middle. There's kind of the old axiom when you have a game like that, you burn the tape. It, do you and your staff, do you find any benefit of watching a game like that and showing things like that to your team? Uh, you know, I think there's probably moments where you kind of, you know, say, let's just flush this uh, because it's not going to happen again. Um, but I think it's important with a young team, especially on the look, let, let's let's really look at this as it is, right? We have 11 players that have started at their position on offense back, 11. All 11 players at their particular position had started at their position at one time or another on the offensive side of the ball. And they have played like that, right? And, and the expectation should be. We really have four uh, on the defensive side of the ball. And so it's important that every moment is a teaching experience for them. So in one sense, you kind of want to move forward um, but in another, it's so important that every moment becomes a teaching moment for our football team. Hey, Coach. Um, last year, you had 
your D line had to, out of necessity, carry so many snaps. Um, I guess just like looking at the Ole Miss game, those starters carried about 85% of them. Uh, is that the number you want to be at? Uh, and also to follow up. It, it's it's really about the. Um, you know, getting the right players on the field, uh, playing their very best football. And and so, you know, what what is that configuration? And it's kind of going back to the earlier question. Um, we've got to be able to maximize the potential of our defensive line. Um, and, you know, we're in, we're in conversation about, are we doing that? You know, and so, um, you know, we're big. You know, we're big up front. We have to play physical. We have to play with low pads. We have to create a new line of scrimmage. So I'm not trying to avoid your question as much as I'm trying to tell you that we have to create, um, you know, the, the right scheme so our guys can be the best versions of themselves. And just a player update, was and is Deshaun Womack available right now? Yes, absolutely. Ryan, you spoke of the, the, the collective effort, the coaching. Um, you, with Matt, Matt House is still making all the decisions. You have, you have a former defensive coordinator who co worked with you, obviously, on the staff. Do you want to get more of his input? I mean, it, does, does any, has any of that changed as far as, you know, I'm not saying you have to have co-defensive coordinators, but has anything changed? No, uh, the, the, the decision-making process is, is nothing that is um, a concern of mine. Um, you know, this, this is really about um, the, the teaching uh, and the execution. And so that requires um, two parties, the coaches uh, coaching and, and the players executing. And, and so, you know, that's not about um, leadership. That's not about um, uh, the message not resonating. I feel great about all those things and the leadership that we're getting from my defensive coordinator. Input, we're always welcoming input. So, uh, matter of fact, we had a meeting today with the entire defense. I was with them and we got great input. I'll always ask for input. There's never a silence when it comes to weighing in because you can't, you can't fully buy in unless you're allowed to weigh in. So, we take information. We, we want to listen to everybody that has experience. but. Uh, there is one voice, there is one leader of our defense. I have the utmost confidence in his ability to uh, run our defense and he will run it effectively. We need to continue to coach and teach and develop our players and we will do that. Right on that sort of teaching and coaching, is there anything that you want to have done differently in terms of the coaching of some fundamentals like tackling um, to improve in those sort of basic areas? Well. So what is tackling, right? What is tackling? T tackling can be taught and, and, and something that we teach every single day. Um, and, and so, you know, when we talk about it, how much time do we spend on it? So we have to examine and look at our practice schedule. Are we spending enough time? Well, traditionally, it would say that, you know, that's what we normally spend. With this group, maybe we have to spend more time. So those are the kind of discussions that we're having is that, you know, uh, we recognize the importance of tackling, how important it is, and how it impacted this game. You know, I think it was, um, you know, over 285 yards after misses that, that led to their offense, and um, tackling was at the center of it. So, uh, you know, we have to be able to look at, uh, are we spending enough time, given the circumstances, and, and those would be the adjustments we would make. Coach, Coach Dime here, it, it looked like um, you're forced into a lot of different combinations in the two outside corner spots. So I'm wondering how far along are you into finding like a consistent grouping back there? You're seeing what I'm seeing. Um, we're, we're working our tails off. You know, we had some injuries there. You know, we lost Zay uh, for a little bit uh, with an ankle. Um, Ashton Stamps was coming off of a, a groin injury. Um, they were game. They, they gave us everything they had um, and, and, and did the best they could uh, given the circumstances. So um, I'm proud of those guys. They went out and they competed um, and, and did the best that they could given the circumstances. But that's, you know, that's our rotation. Those are the four guys, LT and, and Denver. Those are the four guys that, that, we, uh, that we're rolling with right now.
Hey coach over here. Um, so update on Greg Brooks, how is he doing? And just, I know things are bigger than football, obviously. Yeah. But uh, yeah. one more thing as well, um, just not having him out there, well, just from a football standpoint, how much of a void is that, not to have a leader back there to help communication, line guys up in secondary? Yeah, I mean, certainly uh, the last thing I was thinking about was the, the, the tackling, but, you know, uh, saw Greg yesterday. Uh, we had a couple of players over there. Greg, I know, was over there, Penn and, and Mackay. Um, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's able to respond to, to commands. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's been a long road for him. Um, his family has been amazing. They're there every day. Uh, the support that he's been receiving from uh, the community um, is, is been overwhelming. And I know the family uh, can't thank everybody enough for the, the great support, but this is a, you know, this is a long battle and, and he continues to fight every day. Um, you know, he was able to give us thumbs up yesterday uh, when we were there. So we're getting, you know, those uh, little acknowledgements that makes us feel better um, uh, as, we, uh, as we get a chance to, to see him. Yeah, I mean, as I mentioned, you know, uh, Greg and Joe Fouché and Jay Ward and uh, Jared Bernard Converse and Makai Gardner, those were veteran dudes for us last year. <laughs> and they tackled the, they got the ball on the ground. Um, and and we we got to keep working with our young guys, and and we got to get the ball on the ground. But um, there's a significant loss in, in in tackles there, and you know we knew it was going to be uh, a process, and we're going to stick with our process, and we're going to keep working at it, and we got to get better each and every day. We know we're accountable for it. We're not going to shy away from it, but we got to work on the guys that we have, and we're going to work to get better every day. Uh, Brian, a couple things. You talked about the communication. I was just wondering, what is it coming from the players? Obviously, with young guys like like you have in certain spots, you know, there's some things that they're just not going to be able to do. What what are they telling you? And then, secondly, in a situation like this with the secondary you have, is it better to back the safety out of the box and, and have them play a little bit more help? Yeah, I mean, look, we could. Communication, there shouldn't be issues with communication. There should be, if you are in man coverage, you should know you're in man coverage. Um, you know, we had a situation where, you know, obviously we, we thought we were in man and everybody else thought they were man and one guy didn't think he was in man. So, you know, those things can't happen, certainly. Um, uh, you know, trying to decide whether, you know, you're dropping somebody in a hat, you know, in a hit position versus keeping him back. I mean, it's so technical relative for me to get into it today. It, 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 and I'm not trying to dumb down the answer as much as I'm, what I'm trying to say is everything that we try to do is to take not only what we're trying to defend uh, into consideration, but who we have out there too. Um, so all of those things are, are taken into consideration is what I'm saying. Uh, Coach Chris, with Deuce Chestnut not traveling with the team, was that a coach's decision? Yes. And uh, is there any update on the injury report? Yes, let me give you that. Um, injury report. Uh, we have Chris Hilton, Omar Spates, and Aaron Anderson. Uh, we would list those guys as of yesterday, questionable. Um, Lacey uh, and Javen Nickel. Javon Nicholas as probable. Those are our guys. Lower body for the first uh, for the first three guys, uh, and uh, the same for the the next two that are probable. In the middle, Brian. Yeah. So you mentioned a lot of the new players defensively. Yeah. Last season was very similar. You had a lot of new players defensively that had transferred in. Mm -hmm. Defense last year performed well. Why isn't the message, or why doesn't the message appear to be taking this year the way it did a year ago? Well, I, I think I made it clear that the, the different players that we're talking about are younger players that are playing, you know, very prominent roles. You know, you had a Micah Baskerville, for example, instead of a Whit Weeks, you know, who's a young player versus a veteran player. You're playing, you know, a freshman corner versus a, a fifth year corner. Um, so, yeah, there, there's there's a lot of freshmen that are that are in that and. Um, 
because of that, there's a lot more inexperience. Um, what we need to do is, is, is we need to play better. You're absolutely right. I mean, so your question is uh, on point relative to the overall defense. We have to play better, regardless of who the players are. Um, but um, we have a lot of new players, um, and we have to get the younger players that are in prominent roles, as well as the transfer players that we picked through the, the portal. Those were the guys that we picked. We have to get all those guys playing at a higher level. Uh, Coach, a lot of people watching the game felt like Wood Weeks made an in immediate impact when he got into the game, and then apparently he didn't get in until it was 28 points on the board or whatnot. Do you think he may start or get into the game earlier, or how do you evaluate the way he's played? He's yelling, he's learning. Yeah, I mean, we love his energy. We love what he's doing. Um, you know, we want him to continue to grow, continue to do what he's doing. Um, there's nothing uh, There's nothing that we don't like about him, but he's learning the position. Brian, down here. Uh, um, you talked about you know going to the portal and end up getting young guys in order to avoid having to go into the portal year after year in the secondary. But in retrospect right now, do you maybe wish that y'all had approached that any differently? We didn't have much choice uh, based upon where we were um, the year before. We had to put a team together. Um, so we were going to be in this situation regardless. And listen, I, I don't want to sit up here and talk about what we don't have. What we have is a good football team uh, that needs to play better and we need to coach better. And, and regardless of all the other um, things that are out there, uh, we're in the position that we're at. Um, and so, look, I mean, we, we know the situation uh, that we have. Um, we've got to get the guys that, that are on our roster um, playing at a higher level. And we had 34 missed tackles for 284 yards. We have to tackle the football, and we have to create a new line of scrimmage. If we do those two things, we're going to be better on defense, we're going to keep the points down, and we're going to continue to win football games at LSU. That's the standard. We didn't live up to that standard, and um, we need to. Um, so uh, we need to get back to work. We're going to get back to work here uh, today with a team meeting, and um, we'll get back on the field on Tuesday uh, with that being our resolve. Coach, right here, down, right down, right here. Um, you've had so many years of experience. Is there anything that you could draw from or pull from? Not that there's a magic recipe, but to be able to kind of turn this around within the season. I mean, is this something that Heck just yes. just takes just takes time, or is it more of just you know getting these guys? I don't have time. time. Do I look like I've got time? <laughs> I, did, I didn't come down here because I got time. I came down here to be successful with the LSU football program. So, no, we don't have time. That's why we, we did what we did um, in, in the transfer portal, or I would have took all freshmen last year. Um, so there is some management of this, um, but we, we, we'll, we'll get them better. We'll, we'll, we'll get these guys playing better. They want to play better. They, they, they've got pride. Um, these guys will respond. They'll bounce back. Um, we lost, I think, 40-something to 14 to Tennessee, and I think they were ready to burn the city down. And uh, we came back the next week and beat Florida on the road. So um, we don't need to all jump off the buildings yet. Um, we're we're going to be okay. We're going to keep working hard. Um, these guys are, got a lot of pride in LSU football. Um, our coaches are going to work hard, and um, we're going to keep getting better. Uh, you could just kind of educate me. Are you all running combo coverages in the secondary? You're killing me. <laughs> You're killing me. I right just now. don't want to say anything wrong on TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm starting a new league. <laughs> yes, we're running combo coverages. Okay. Does that help? Yeah. And then secondly, um, 34 tackles is pursuit angles. You guys that don't ever get to the tackle, is that included in that? Well, when we're talking about missed tackles, we're talking about we're in the hole, we miss a tackle. We're, we're not talking about open field missed tackles. We're talking about in its totality, when we have an opportunity to make a tackle, we, we miss the tackle. Not necessarily pursuit. Oh, well, everything is, you know, if we take, if we take the wrong angle, if we, we're for outside in instead of inside out, I mean, all those things, all those things matter. This is a hard day. Tough questions.
probing, <laughs> dual <laughs> coverages. We, we don't tilt the nose, so if we can get through that, we're, we're in good shape. Any other questions uh, about, uh, yes, please, I'll, I'll, take a, I'll take one. I'm taking your job, I'm sorry. They, have, they just have to pass the mic around. You have to answer the question. Mm. Uh, usually when you, you see a, prog a program or a team having a struggle in a game or something, it's, it's often both sides of the ball, but your offense has been exceptional uh, the, in, the entire season. Can, can you speak to, from a coaching standpoint, just what level of... It's number action? one in total offense. Yeah. It's number one in pass offense. It's n Just in case you didn't get these, if you want to write them down. It's number one in third down conversion. It's number two in scoring. It's number three in... Third uh, uh, rush offense. Jaden Daniels leads the SEC and ranked number two in the nation in total offense. Leads the SEC in total uh, touchdowns and passing, pass efficiency and passing touchdowns. And it's the fourth straight game accounting for at least four touchdowns. Brian Thomas leads the nation in receiving. This is for Mike Bonnet's sake because he does this all the time and I never read any of this stuff from Mike. So Mike, that was a good, this is this that is was for good you. Time. He does this. It's all nice. It's typed up. And you, think, and you lead the nation in first downs. Uh, uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it is interesting because, you know, the 2019 team, prolific. It won the national championship. Um, these numbers are, are starting to, to look like those kind of numbers. That's the kind of offense that we're talking about. And that's why it's so darn important to play better defense. That's why it's so important. Because when you have an offense like this, um, you, you want to be able to Got showcase, absolutely. And, and it doesn't get the showcase because all the questions here are about the defense. And I understand that, totally understand that. So that's why it's so important that, that we, we, we do the things necessary um, to, to get the points down so we play better defense. One last thing, if I may, from a coach's critical, we see the numbers as you do, the stats and everything, how efficient are you being on offense? I mean, how, how good does it look to you? I mean, if, if, are you like, you, you, I'm sure there's always something you can do better, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there were, you know, I, I thought the last couple of drives, you know, we had a chance to, you know, with five minutes to go in the game. We don't want to, like we did against Arkansas, we don't want to give the ball up, you know? That, that was probably the one thing that we wish we were better. Um, it, to me, the last team that had the ball was going to win, and and we had you know the last the last chance, and we didn't make a play at the end. But you know we had a chance to, to close that game out. I thought, and and uh, we didn't convert when we needed to. That's probably the only the only thing that I could take a shot at our offense, and, and there's not much to, to to say about that. Thank you. Good. All right.